We're live and nationwide. All right, let's take it away. I'm here with Jordan Trask, who's the CEO and founder of Prefocus. Introduce yourself, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that, Jack. Uh, president, founder, CEO, whatever you like to call me, Prefocus. It's basically exactly what I do. I help companies, personal, professional brands really pre-focus and find their value, their competency um, before investing in the branding process. And I uh, came across Jack here, um, who obviously takes quite a, a different approach to uh, the traditional development process of branding. Absolutely. So talk a little bit, if you would, about, um, let's, let's get some specifics. Why do companies need to pre-focus before they start on their branding efforts? Yeah, good question. I think a lot of times, just in general, companies don't even know where to begin and they want to jump right into marketing. And they think that there's like a definitive process that they can just check the boxes on and, and really you know, get the results they want. But every business is different. So that's really where my passion comes in is defining that difference to find that authenticity of your brand, that origin story, and taking the time to establish that so you're able to not only understand how you want to market, but also how you differentiate yourselves in the market and then train your people so that they're able to yeah. implement the same type of approach, I guess. In a nutshell, we, we have limited time, Jack. <laughs> well, what, I, what I like about what you told me is, is that it, I think it just dovetails with my approach. Um, Cult Your Brand takes um, a round, uh, takes an indirect approach to creating um, the, the types of psychological conditions in your customers' minds that makes them want to be loyal. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, the typical loyalty programs involve rewarding customers um, either monetarily with experiences or with merchandise for for being repeat customers. That's how loyalty is traditionally um, attempted to be gained. Um, if you're more of an upscale kind of organization where you've got high ticket item um, services or products, oftentimes you'll offer customers um, exclusive experiences, exclusive events, access to places that, that the average run-of-the-mill customer won't go. Um, and all of those things work. Um, however, cult your brand is is a is an entirely different approach that bypasses our human cognitive defenses. You know, I mean, anybody who's been involved in marketing or sales knows that human beings don't make rational buying decisions. We tell ourselves we're making rational buying decisions, but Virtually every buying decision that is made is is an emotional decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we buy because we we feel good about the person we're interacting with, or we we are imagining how good we're going to feel once we own this widget, whatever it may happen to be. Um, and and then only after we've made that emotional decision do we actually begin to come up with the logical, rational reasons why this is the right decision. I'm not saying anything that people who operate in sales don't know. And then on the marketing side, as you're trying to get to that to that selling proposition, anybody who's been involved in marketing understands that you don't attract people with data, with logic, with rationality. It's just not, it, it doesn't work. Um, the clearest example, honestly, recently is the 2016 presidential election, where Donald Trump uh, made an, an entirely um, emotion, I would argue, an identity-based appeal, whereas Hillary Clinton, by and large, was, deal was, was making a data and rationally-based appeal for people's votes. And it's very clear that, that the identity and emotional appeal has far more strength and power to persuade than the logical appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything that in Cult Your Brand is crafted um, to hone in with laser-like focus on the part of our human consciousness. I hesitate to say brain because it's there's more to it than just biology. There's also psychology to it. But it's mm -hmm. designed to hone in 
on our human um, emotion in a way that, that actually results in loyalty. Customers who come back because these things that you do, which are merely psychological triggers, make the customers feel good mm-hmm. and make them want to come back and, and keep experiencing that good feeling. Where you come in is the, the pre-focus work that, you're, that you are doing with your clients is absolutely necessary to, to, do, to take some of the powerful steps that result in this kind of cult your brand loyalty. I call these, these, uh, these principles the loyalty reflex triggers. Mm-hmm. Um, so your, your work with pre-focus, literally, I, I think it, it both lays a little bit of a foundation for what I do and then dovetails very nicely with it. And uh, the combination can be a tremendously powerful uh, marketing and branding, not merely a campaign, but an entire strategy and focus, um, a messaging focus, so that your people are, are, are delivering the type of psychological um, strokes from, from the beginning of the, of the prospect interaction all the way through the repeat customers. Um, all designed with one goal in mind, which is to have customers who keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. And I think that that's where, you know, we really touched on that last week when we talked is, is, you know, how do you establish that loyalty? And some people even think that it's, it's impossible. You know, they have to have that experience first. And I think just like you said, it's, it's kind of, um, we're seamlessly transitioning together where, you focus on that presentation that allows yourself to be trustworthy with the pre-focus, you know, the actual development, the, the identity or persona of your brand, you establish that and you showcase that in different forms of media so people can see the true you, right? That's what you want to do in branding, essentially, but then you transition it into a strategy that you use that messaging, you use that presentation, that uh, cognitive uh, identification that people can that resonates with them that they want to be a part of. Exactly. Um, and and that's where a lot of people, you know, I guess choke on their tongue when it comes to marketing. They they know how to to you know push quantitative marketing where it's numbers game, numbers game, numbers game. The more you get in front of people, I think we talked about Coke, right? Right. Um, and you know that's that's you know that works you know to a certain extent as far as when you're making a choice, but it doesn't really matter. If you have Coke or Pepsi, like you said, you know, you're right. desiring caffeine. Yeah, we call that we call that the, those circumstantial decisions. Right. I may be a Coke drinker, but given the right circumstances, I'll I'll take a Pepsi, and I won't experience any kind of of emotional or psychological distress as a result of of uh, betraying the brand that I have expressed loyalty to. Mm-hmm. Um, when people really want to buy into that. Yeah, that's not the kind of loyalty that that you want to buy. Well, there's that. I I would argue that's not really loyalty. In fact, I would argue that's really lousy branding. Mm-hmm. You know, as you and I talked about, um, the word branding has kind of been hijacked by the marketing industry and turned into something completely opposite of what it was originally meant. Yeah, branding is something. It's not something I you do to yourself. It's an activity that you engage in with your customers and you brand your customers you um um, without being too graphic you psychologically sear the fact that you own them into their into their psyche um i know i'm using very powerful and quite frankly probably provocative language but that's how branding originally got started and my argument is that that's how your branding should work. Right. Your branding should be so powerful um, that you can't even imagine ordering a Pepsi if a Coke's not available. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're actually a Coke customer, and that's where so, the focus comes in is if you don't really have a purpose mm-hmm. behind what you're doing but to make sense of, or you don't even know your ideal customer, you know that can identify with your brand. I know you don't yes. like to use the word brand, your company. Yes. But, you know, they're gonna make those decisions where uh give me a give me a Pepsi because that's they just want that refreshing feeling and they're not necessarily I think you 
you worded it, I loved it, by the way, to where they feel bad or guilty when they use somebody else. And my wife uses, and I talked to her about this, so she referenced like a hairdresser. Uh-huh. Uh, that hairdresser that does your hair a certain way. And women, trust me, just I won't go into detail. But if that hairdresser is not available and they, or we're out of town or something and she has to use somebody else, like it's painful. Because number one, she doesn't know the experience she's going to deal with. She doesn't know, you know, what's the um, the values of that company behind that company. What's their origin? What are, what's their why? Right. right? You know, what's important to them? And, and do they value the customer as much as ABC hairdresser knows? And I think that's a beautiful way to paint that picture. Um, yes, absolutely. And um, I know you touched on too, just having being able to embrace your ideal audience, but also, uh, what did you say? Ideal enemies, I think you said, or your well, if you if you do the cult your brand program the right way, if you hit all five loyalty triggers and you hit them in a powerful way. And, you know, part of my program is to, is to train our, our, our clients how to use all five of these triggers. If you do it well, that is 100% guaranteed that you will create fanatically loyal either customers or fanatically loyal enemies. Mm-hmm. And you need both. You need them. Fanatically loyal enemies are actually, believe it or not, the single most valuable asset that a company can have. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's, that's why we approach once you see what the five loyalty reflex triggers are um, and begin trying to implement them, them in your business, your most people will have an, a little bit of a of a an anxious moment or two as they, as we begin working through things like your origin story, your manifesto, where you're making statements that are very emotional and um, in, in some ways confrontational, but they establish very clearly who you are as an organization, as a, as a leader. And when you do that, when you take a firm stand, this is who I am, this is what I value, this is what I believe, that creates... That the very act of taking a stand creates that amazing loyalty response. You'll either make people feel like they want to get closer to you, like they want to identify with you, or you'll make them feel like you are the opposite of them and they want to identify as the opposite of you and they become loyal opponents, loyal enemies. And those guys will do wonders for your marketing budget. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you know, traditional branders, <clears throat> excuse me, who may see what we're doing and, you know, they may do everything in their power to push people away from the concept that we're trying to establish here. But at the end of the day, it's going to be how people feel, um, you know, how powerful this message is to them. And if it resonates with you, awesome. Great. That's the people we want, right? Those are the people exactly. we want. If it doesn't, you know, it's not going to hurt our feelings because we understand how powerful this can be if done properly and you take the time to identify. You're yep. still in your core audience. Yep. You got it. You got it. Boy, we could talk for hours, couldn't we? I think so. But, you know, <laughs> we already did that. So <laughs> I think, you know, we're, me and, um, you know, Jack, we're, trying, we're really trying to figure things out and how we can put, I guess, a, process i mean i don't like process because there's no definitive process but a service together that people for people that are interested in really taking their branding to the next level or if you're a new business and you want to do it the right way you know jack touched on it best that traditional branding has been hijacked by marketing and you know it's it's got to a point where it's hard to really differentiate the two and people don't know the two because it's gotten so convoluted over the years um, but we wanted to just do a quick video here touching on what we're passionate about and what we've been talking about for a week or so. And, um, you know, in the near future, we'll start expanding on a little bit more. I, I believe so. I think we need to, uh, we got to, we need, to, our next step is probably to get this, uh, this podcast going, mm-hmm. you know, um, and we'll do some very tightly focused conversations about uh, the, the various steps um, the action steps that that businesses can take um, 
both positive and negative mm -hmm. to increase to increase the the value of what they offer um, in the minds of the market and be more clear about it. yeah and be more clear about it i think yeah. too just allowing them to be able to identify if maybe they're going down the wrong path or you know, yes. not being as effective and being able to take that 180, I think is important too. So like you said, there's plenty of stuff we can talk about. But Sounds good. We look, we look forward to ironing out that um, and continuing these talks and, and really providing the value that we're passionate about. So appreciate it, Jack. Thank you, Jordan.